The butterfly is the most majestic of insects. I'm not going to do as I have done and show some of my favourite kinds because I feel beauty is so intrinsically and universally a part of the butterfly that to discern a favourite among the vast variety would be to miss the beauty and rob yourself of truly experiencing the splendour of this insect. In saying this, I don't mean to abandon scientific inquiry. We shall follow the life of a butterfly, from egg to larva to winged wonder. Once again, of course, we are in the Animalia Kingdom, but today we visit the Arthropoda Philum, the Insecta class, and the Lepidopter order. Now the Lepidopter order hosts butterflies and moths. Moths are another favourite insect of mine, particularly the elephant hawk moth, the larvae of which I came across this year. The particular butterfly we will be looking at today, however, will be the monarch butterfly, which is found in the Nymphalidae family. Although larvae eat only milkweed, adult monarchs are more flexible in their diets. Adult monarchs, well known for their completely liquid diet, have been seen on a number of different nectar plants. Now here we see the caterpillar undergoing metamorphosis here. We see the, the chrysalis forming here. See how the caterpillar writhes to get rid of its old skin as this spectacular metamorphosis transpires. And something remarkably different emerges, like a new creature, gone are the old ways of life. Now this insect shall fly gracefully among others. I've often wondered, if the caterpillar had a mind, would it be shocked at this transformation? Or would it live in expectation of it? The monarch's wingspan ranges from 8.9 to 10.2 centimetres, or 3.5 to 4 inches. And here we see the adult form of the butterfly. Again, this is the monarch. The monarch is, uh, is famous for its southward late summer autumn migration from the United States and southern Canada to Mexico and coastal California and then its northward return in spring which occurs over the lifespans of three to four generations of the butterfly. The distances covered by these fragile insects are amazing. When the mass exodus of butterfly reach the temperate promised lands of Mexico, they are dawn trees, more numerous than the leaves, it appears, that become one with the tree. And another metamorphosis has transpired. What was once a tree has now turned into the breathtaking host of butterfly. The truth is their coming to the tree preserves their lives. As much beauty as they have, and they have much, they recognise that the time to flaunt their colours has ended, and in humility they must come together by the tree. Of course, I attribute them too much cognizance, but I mean to convey deeper truths. So 
Summer passed, inspired by their frolicking in a meadow. I described the beauty of a butterfly, to be as if the flower petals became weary of expressing their beauty through colour and fragrance, so took to the air to dance. This is one of the most wonderful spectacles in nature. All the leaves of these trees are so fantastically covered by butterfly wings. No, pardon me. The Butterfly Hunter by German painter Karl Spitzvig. I wanted to show you this here picture. I'll just give you a pan up. I advise you find this yourself on uh, Google Images. It's a wonderful, wonderful painting. And I've got a little comment to make about it. The Butterfly Hunter by German painter Karl Spitzvig. Spitzvig was of the, the uh, sorry, he was of the Romanticism movement. But just look at this painting. Isn't it mysterious and enchanting? I think it is. I like the butterflies and the light, the lighting in the picture. Then there's this figure of a butterfly collector. There's something about this image that fascinates me. The man might be seen as imposing and unwanted, but he's necessary. It's not that he doesn't belong there. It's that his intentions are not the most beautiful. I reckon, however, the expression of surprise on his face is him being dumbfounded by the serenity he's entered into and the recognition of the odious intentions with which he was about to unjustly corrupt paradise. In the moments preceding this one, I imagine there'd be a shameful man, a fallen net, and a great unifying emotion of want for reconciliation.